my God is good. There's people who say don't move for husband too, which <laughs> we bind that spirit. Husband one by one, no. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Glory be to God. If you're in your house, I want you to just move around. If you're in the church, move around, move around, move around. Go round, go round. Let some let some wall of Jericho fall down flat. Just go round. Let's go around a little bit. 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 Salaba, Miss Coron de Legere, Arama, 30 seconds. In Legere Bosada, you can run, you can run, you can run, you can run around. Ayataba, so Payaba, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. In a terrible Salaba, 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 Hey, five more seconds. Go deeper. Go deeper. Go deeper. Hey, hey. Go deeper. Go deeper. Go deeper. Mark Harabus. There you go. Get it. If I can hear the musician up here, some kind of way that will be great. The musician, if I can hear that. Not what is going on online, but what is going on the stage. 
If I can hear the musician more, glory be to God. They can hear themselves well because the keyboard is facing them. So it's very loud for them, but it's not loud in the stage here. Yeah. It may be loud online, but it's not, I'm not hearing music here. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Are you blessed? God will speak mystery to you in Jesus' mighty name. Sit down, never go down. Somebody say power. Go ahead, sit down. Have your seat. God bless you. Oh, Shia Gada Gada. Uh huh. Now, when our season of with God, nothing is impossible. That's the season we are in. And uh, I was asking the Lord what to share with you this morning as we wrap up the month that have been so glorious. We have lost count. We have been fasting and fasting and fasting. We fasted. We are still fasting. Our big fasting is coming up September the 1st to the 7th. Seven days no food fasting. I've fasted more than 100 days. I've not stopped my fasting since May 1st. Glory be to God. We are not stopping till we finish the seven days no food one. Praise God. So you can be counting for me. Somebody do the mass and tell me if you pass. <laughs> Class in school. Do the mass yourself and find out since May the first. Let me see if you know what number I am now. Glory be to God. Sometimes when you put some money on it, you know people know math. They know, say, whoever get it first will win a hundred dollars. You will find that people know how to use their cell phone. They begin to calculate very fast. God will give you grace. Who found out it? How many number? What day is this? We are no more counting days. We are counting impartation. Amen? But God is a good God. So as I meditate on what to say to you this morning, the Lord said to me, I should speak to you about... The topic this morning is going to be, you are what you speak. You are what you speak. That's the subject this morning. You are what you speak. If we can post that, the topic this morning is, you are what you speak. You are what you speak. You are what you speak. You will end up what you speak. Nobody is disturbing you. You are just what you speak. If we can type that up there. You are what you speak. You are what you speak. As I look at what God is saying about you are what you speak, I'm reminded us of, of some few ways to approach this to you. I'm looking at what I believe most of us know. And at the same time, I'm looking at what most of us do not practice that we know. Please take note of this as we take off. Matthew 12, 37. Matthew 12, 37. Says. That by your word you are justified. And by your words you are condemned. By your words you are justified. You are acquitted. And by your word also, you are condemned. Your words. Most of us know Proverbs 18, 21 Life and death are in the power of the tongue. But I quickly want to take you to where the problem is.
where the problem is is most of our reaction is coming from our body our physiology if you are not being affected in your body or your physiology you are being affected in your language if you are not being affected in your language you are being affected in your focus and your belief let's write those things down Oh, prophet, I, I think I need some medication. Do you know what medication really do to your body? Medication helps your body to become sensitive or non-sensitive. So, that medication you think is helping you is only helping your physiology. The reason why medication have not made you better and will never make you better is because if God cannot change your language, you're going to go back to you continuously having body pains. God will change your words to change your life. And then the last point, number three point there, is your focus. The thing you have seen that you believe. Depression is not what is happening to you. Depression is what you are doing. Oh, prophet, I'm depressed. You are doing depression. Depression is a behavior you do. It's not what is happening to you. It's what you practice. So quickly, three areas you must watch out for. Three areas you can crush all the demons are affecting you and all the witches are affecting you. Have you seen any evil person, any demon, any force of darkness from the pit of hell that is able to walk outside the first thing you notice about them is the way they look ugly. If somebody is smiling like this, you don't see them as evil. But someone says, oh, you see that as evil. Let me do it again. I want you to watch something here. Oh, you don't see this as evil. He's smiling, he's waving. But let somebody do, oh. why do you see oh, as evil? Watch what you're missing. The physiology, the body communication. So, your body posture is the first demonic attack you do not know. Even the way you are sitting now, I can tell you if you're under attack or not. Because your body language is the first message. That make your life to be oppressed. When you are tired, your body drop. You have never seen something so smiley coming to you and you thought it was evil. It's just coming like a cat, it's coming like a lion, it's coming like something that you know before that is you are horrible. You, you will look for something like lizard, cat, scorpion, scorpion. It must be ugly things. Why is it that your physiology 
do not see flowers like snake. Why don't you react to see a flower as a serpentine spirit? You have never caught flower one time a devil. You have never caught flower one time a snake. But you will call serpent, you will call lizard, you will call frog, you call why? You are missing something so big, the physiology. So the first attack is body posture. If the devil attack you where you are like this, sluggish, that's why I told you all to move around. Praise the Lord. That's why I told you to get up from your bed. Just by your movement, your action. This morning I've gone to prayer work for more than 10 miles. Just by your movement, you have paralyzed the devil. Just by moving, I say, oh, it's a great day. Jesus, it's a wonderful day. Whereas you, some of you wake up and say, it's, alive. it's very, that, those posture are the first attack why you can never think clear. The way you wake up, you were inviting them. So, prophet, I did not invite them. You were doing what attracted them because it has become your habit. Please write this down. Your habit supersedes your reasoning. So, you think things are happening to you, it is you happening to things. You are the one creating those things that is happening. The day you know that, you are delivered. So, the first attack, the devil cannot attack you first beyond the body. Prophet, waist pain, leg pain, neck pain, all uh, it must be there. Now, where is Made a man of God, man of God, and woman of God. What? Why is it that medicine work? Because medicine shock your body. Medicine stimulate your body. It makes you to feel other stimulants that may make you to begin to react in your body, just like food will do. Do you notice if you go and run very strong, you get hungry? Then you eat, you feel full. You know what is happening? When you went to run, your body told you by putting hunger in your stomach that you have born energy. You need to replace it. But you can tell your body, I don't want to replace it now. <laughs> Do somebody cut But no, that's not what you respond. You went to run, you went to exercise, automatically you're going to get hungry because your body is going to say, what you just took out, feel, refill. But that refill is a habit your body has practiced. It's not real. I hope somebody caught that. That thing to make you hungry is what your body has practiced for 20, 30, 40 years to give you signals to refill. Those signals are positive ventures for you. But you can say, ah, thank you for the signal. But that is just a signal. I don't want to refill now. I will refill at 6 o'clock when I break my fast. Am I communicating something? But if you are not careful, you take that refilling message that your body is giving to you. As, I'm hungry and I'm dying. You are not dying. It's a message. Praise the Lord. You will not die if you fast on, if you press on. You will not. But it feels so real. It is supposed to feel real. Because that is the way your body is supposed to give you the signals that eat and refill. But you can say, not now. You can control it. Your willpower is more powerful than your motivation. Your willpower is the ability to say, I will do what I decide, not what my mind is telling me. 
Can you write this down? Write this down. Your mind is your enemy. Stop acting as if it's your friend. <laughs> it's your mind that lies to you that you are hungry. It's your mind that lies to you and over-exaggerate reality. It's your mind that lies to you and tell you the more money you have, the more you'll be happy. But it's not true that the more money you have, you'll be happy. It's your mind that sold that to you. That's not reality. It's your mind that tells you if you have children, you'll be happy. It's your mind that said to you if you have a wife, you'll be happy. If you have a husband, you'll be happy. That's not reality. It's your mind that told you that. Your mind is your enemy. When you can control your mind and say, mind, listen, you need to go. You must use your willpower to control your mind. Do you know why motivation don't work? 92% of New Year resolution never comes to pass. 92%. When New Year come, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. 92% of new year resolution never happen. Oh, you know what? It's new year. I'm losing weight. Oh, this year is the 92% don't come to pass. Why? Your habit is far stronger than your reason. Your habit can override you. So instead of you to try to let your mind control you, let your habit control you. So number one, where the devil is getting you, and the devil cannot get you beyond this, is your body. Your physiology. Are you ready for number two? Number two is your language. Your incantations. Nobody incants more than you. You are the... I, if somebody tell you not to incant no more, you almost die. Prophet, no, I, I don't incant you. You incant so much, eh? Your incantation, what you say, your mantra sometimes. Your, your incantations are more powerful than your eyesight. That's what you don't know. How many times have somebody tell you something is on top of the shelf? I say, I can't see it, I can't see it, I can't see it. Your language is making your eye not to see it. And later on, you say, oh, it's here. It was always there. Can I say, have that happened to anybody before? But it was always there. It was your word that was controlling your eyes. You did not know. Your word control your eyes in your life. And your words are your incantations. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Your word is not controlling your eyes. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how this is going to get done. Your word is now controlling your eyes. So all those words you speak and it appears so innocent to you, they are the things controlling your eyesight. If you can say it, you will see it. Do you notice what you see? You always look for somebody to tell? Because if you don't look for nobody to tell, it will never be real. That is, the devil will not allow you to see something and not say it. Because he knows it is your saying it that make it real, not what you see. Did somebody cut it? It's your saying it. Say, but, but I need to say what I see. Your saying it is what make it real. It was not real before. The more you say it, the more it is real. The more you say it, the more it is real.
I don't know where it is. I don't know where it is. I don't know where it is. You know why you're saying that word? That's your habit. You learn it from a childhood. And you're saying it. And that takes over your sight without you know. That's how the devil affects you. The devil can never affect your life if he cannot control your words. It's impossible. If you control your own words, the devil, the devil is in trouble in your life. Any man that controls his word, no matter what that man sees, he controls what he says. That's why I say you are what you speak. If you can control what you say, you have changed your life. But prophet, I see it. Some of you are so busy trying to tell us what you see is real that you forget it's your words that control your sight. Your own word is what is controlling what you're saying. The more you've established it with your words, it will keep on coming to your sight. You want it to leave your sight alone, then stop speaking it. He saw what he spoke. Do you remember Genesis? He saw what he what? He saw what he what? God said, let there be. And he saw you are seeing what you are speaking. You thought it is what you see you speak. No, it is what you are speaking you are seeing. Learn it from Genesis. It's deep. He never saw light until he spoke light. It is your word that controls your sight. It's not your sight that controls your words. You have tell people it is in the reverse. It's not so. Your language is how the devil gets you. Your language is what has created the demons in your house. Number three. Your focus and your belief. What you focus on that you believe is over. Your focus and your belief. And that is always a venture of fear. Prophet, I'm stressed. All stress is fear. Your stress. I'm so stressed. I'm so stressed. That stress you are feeling is fear. I'm so down. You are afraid. It's fear. And the reason you are afraid is your focus and your belief. If you change your focus, fear will disappear. If you change your focus and you change your belief, nobody can help you to solve this problem. You must change your focus and change your belief, then fear will disappear. You must change your focus. Do you know there are people that believe, there are people that believe that if you lose somebody, somebody died, you are supposed to mourn the person for seven days and even cry for those seven days. And that if you do not cry in some religion for seven days, you are not a good person. Now imagine somebody grew up like that. He will not know that his belief that he have to cry for seven days is controlled by his focus. Did somebody cut that? And then there are another religion in this world that believe once somebody died, they are gone. There is no need burying the let the dead bury the dead. And you should move on. And you find that when that person is faced with somebody dying, they don't mourn for one hour. They do not mourn for one hour. They just let the person go. They can float him in water. And their religion say it is gone. He will regenerate again. Belief determines their emotions. Their focus, and their belief and their focus. Their belief and their focus is what is controlling the emotion they are allowing. Is somebody catching what I'm saying? If they believe this person is going, is going to come back again, everybody's happy. Have you seen where somebody is so sad and then they give you a focus that this person you will see them is in heaven. You see tears move to John. 
Because your belief has changed and your focus has changed. It is your focus. What are two things that are controlling your life? Are you ready for the two things controlling your life? You ready for it? Two things controlling your life. Number one, your state. Your state, the state of your mind. The state of your mind and the, your state is something you can change. It's something you can change. Sometimes, you, some of you come to church and I can see you. Maybe your husband or your wife have dealt with you or you have quarreled. The way you will just relax, you are thinking the comeback you're going to give to her when you get back home. Throughout the service, even when you are shaking your head to prophet, you are not shaking, you are shaking your head like, okay, I think I got a new strategy. Because you are not in the service. Why? Because the event is controlling your state. There are events right now controlling your state. You do not even see them. You know why you don't see those events controlling your state? You think your state right now is a function of just what is happening now. Your state is a function of what you are thinking. Or what you were thinking a few minutes ago. So you actually control your state. Because just like you are looking at me like this, now if they tell you now you get a lot that you have won the lottery, why would that change your state? Your state is controlled by your thoughts. That's why you have scriptures like Proverbs 23 verse 7 say, as you think, so are you. Amen? That's why you have scripture like Joshua 1 8 say, as a man glory be to God meditates day and night he makes his way prosperous. You are getting blessed and your deliverance is very clear. So that sad face you are carrying is not happening to you. You are the one that chose that. That crying you are doing and tears about that faith relationship is not what is happening to you. You chose to cry. Did you get it now? You chose to cry. Why? Because of what that incident represents to you. Every depression that has ever happened to me, I chose it. Because of what has happened to me is the way I have learned, my habit I've learned for 40 years, 30 years, to process sadness. My habit I've learned, process sadness with tears. Process anger with tears. Process fear with tears. What I'm really feeling is fear. What I'm really feeling is a sense of insecurity. But I choose to express it with tears. Tears is not what anybody is doing to you. It's what you chose. It's what I chose. It's what I choose to do. I choose to be sad. Because I'm afraid. Because I don't understand. Because I don't know what to do. Because I do not know if life will turn out well for me. Is somebody catching something here? I see you making a different decision. So your physiology is something you can change now. Glory be to God. You can change it immediately. You, one power God gave to you is that you are in charge. But you keep making everything to be in charge. No. You are in charge. You are more in charge than you are you, you, you admit. You are fully in charge. So you chose those tears. You chose those sadness. You chose those depression. Your psychology is lying to you. Your therapist is lying to you. These are your choices. This is what you chose to do. And you can say, you know what? Devil, you will not see another tears in my life. It's over. And you find out that you can do it. 
Praise the Lord. You, you'll find out. How many of you, somebody have hurt you, hurt you, say, I'm not going to hurt no more. Do you notice the day you say, you're not going to hurt no more, you no more got help? Because when you made that decision that this thing will no more affect you, it stop affecting you. But you see, the decision was made by you. You made a decision. Would have, could have, I would like to, I want to, all those don't work. When it becomes, I must make this decision. When it becomes urgent, you make the change. That is why, to be honest with you, if you are crying, the thing has not really hurt you. The tears is just the pretend. Because when something really hurts you, you do not cry. You change. When something really hurts you, you don't go there no more. You, if fire burn you, you don't put your hand in there no more. Like, no, I ain't touching that no more. Because you know, you make a change forever. Because that's one thing God has given to you. Don't act like that thing controls you. You controls it. And don't be getting mad because you could not control something. Did somebody catch that? Something you wanted to control with manipulation. You could not control it. So you are really mad because you could not control something. And you're not finding out because you could not control something, the thing is not controlling you. I have seen this repeatedly from people that want to control something and find out the thing is controlling them. Let me tell you what high achiever do. Most high achievers, their greatest power is control. Most high achiever. When you see somebody say high achiever, you may not know what they have. They have power and control of events. They can make things happen. Anybody that can buy a car for you, buy a house for you, do things for you, employ you, you know, high achievers can make things happen. The apple you are working at, somebody creates that. High achievers. Did somebody catch up to what I'm saying here? So they can make things happen. They can make provision. They gave you a job. High achiever. So, media department, you are flowing too strong. I see you are following me very well. Glory be to God. So they are making things happen. But what I'm saying is that what they have is that they are controlling you. Because they determine your pay. They determine if you make 25 or if you make 10. They discuss it with their board and set your paycheck. So they are in control. And when they lose that control, they are shocked. <laughs> Praise the Lord. When they lose control, because now what they think influences you no more influence you. They are shocked because they did not learn fast that nothing controls another person. The only reason you were in control was the other person gave you the power. Amen. So don't let somebody manipulating you. Don't let somebody manipulate you by giving you the, their own power. They know it's their power, but they give it to you. So you are happy that their power you now have, they will take it one day. And when they take it, you say, oh, I'm shocked. Don't be a shock. It was always theirs. It was not yours. So don't even desire it. Because it was never yours to have. It was never you to say, come to work on time, and they come to work on time. They only come to work on time because they are still working there. The day they choose to quit, they curse you out and say, listen, don't ever, if you call my phone, the guy will sue you. <laughs> I'm a Christian, but don't call this phone no more. You, how many of you have seen? That's why people say people become rugged when divorce is happening. You don't know your husband and your wife will let divorce be happening. You will know that your husband is wicked. It's more than a serpent. Divorce? Once it is over, the battle line has been drawn. Even church members, you don't know them. Till the day when they say, I will never. <laughs> it's when the battle line has not been drawn. Did somebody cut that? When the battle line has been drawn, then you will not know. And that led me to this. So, anyway, that's the first point. Your. your physiology and your state of mind is controlled by who by you not by another person so what does that mean it is the language you are speaking to yourself that is affecting your life it is not the situation that is controlling you 
it is you controlling the situation with your behavior and your action. You, can, you are fully in charge. Am I communicating something? You are fully in charge of your life. And you will prosper. Amen? Last point here. The second thing that affects you deeply is your environment. What your environment is doing to you is so bad. If you want to go higher, your environment has made you to dumb down. Especially if you are not a leader in your environment. You become, you dumb down your standard. Because you and a dummy cannot be friends. You have to dumb down. How many of you, you want a higher leadership, but you have to dumb down the standard so that you can accommodate this lazy person? It happens all the time. So another thing is your environment and the people. The group you are part of and the environment you are in. If you are going to become great, go and spend some time with great people. They may make you so uncomfortable, but you are not ready to end up great if you cannot go and spend weekends you, you will be so shocked by their workload. You, 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 you will say, is this what they call? In fact, when you leave them, you say, I don't want to be rich. You will be so surprised that that is their real life. <laughs> it's not their vacation, their real life. Am I communicating? So, your group, there are group, so you always have to go to you cannot be greater than your group. You will always dumb down to accommodate them. That's why if you show me your friend, if you are not a pace setter, if you show me your friend, I will tell you how you will look the next 10 years. Just show me who you hang, the girlfriends you hang out with. I can tell you how, look at all, how all of them look. And I will tell you, give yourself five years. If you are still in this group, you will look like them. You must, your body will look like their body. Your shape will look like their shape. Your look will look like their look. Your hairstyle, the way they move their head to the left, you will begin to move your head to the left. Like if you, <laughs> if you stay around me, eh, and you stay in kids, you will learn your Bible. Most people that have come here many times will say, I know many scriptures. Why? Prophet, let me push you with scriptures. It's where you are. There are some churches that use two scriptures to preach. That's it. But we will not tolerate that. We increase the standard. So, in your life, you are, the second most important thing after the state of your weapon is how the group and the people around you is shaping you. A military person must stay around other military people or he will begin to act like a civilian. He will, not, he will lose his training. How will you say you want your husband to look like what you see on TV? Amen. But you don't go to where they find that kind of husband. I need my husband to have muscles, heavy muscles. Uh, Madam, you that need your husband to have muscles, when last did you go to the gym? <laughs> I don't like that area. You don't like that area, but you like that kind of man. Muscle one. Eh? You need to be flat tummy. You like flat tummy? No problem. Flat tummy eh, meets others in flat tummy place. And all of them meet where they call the gym. That's where all of them meet. Ask them. Ask when flat tummy meets flat tummy. Say, where did you all meet? They say, oh, I met him at the gym. Uh, lifetime, Planet Fitness, this. That's where all of them. And there is nobody that is uh, looking like that that didn't go wrong. The, some of them. So you tell uh, your wife, can we go and run? He said, no, I like my thing. Just, you know where you are going to end. Amen? Praise, you know where it is not. Uh, you must. 
It's not anything bad. It's just for you to know that you will dumb down. Some of you are just using your son to pretend. You know my son loves to eat this kind of food. He say lie. You love it more than your son. You know you are just looking for who you can castigate, and you will not put yourself. You will protect it on your son. That's how wicked you can be sometimes. My son loves to eat his rice and stew, so that's why I eat rice and stew. No, you can forfeit it. Amen. Glory be to God. I feel like I'm preaching good. Many of you are laughing. My point is this. Your people, they are affecting you. You will not know if you, if you, if all your friends are so skinny, right? They are skinny like a broom. Even though you don't like skinny, if they are your friend, you will become like them very soon. You will become, if all your friends are muscular as if they are crazy, you know, like they are doing weightlifting, and you stay with them. Eh? I give you, stay with those kind of people for 10 years. Go and live with a heavyweight uh, Olympian muscle person. And you love to cook and eat. There is no way they won't influence you if you stay with them for 10 years. One day, because every day you are saying they're lifting something. One day you, you can't lift to you can't lift small one first. They are already influencing you. The next day you say, okay, show me how do you do it. Before you know, there is influence. Somebody say influence. You didn't plan to. You didn't plan to. But before you know, the, that man, because an Olympic man, that in Whitley, he has influenced you. He has influenced you. Do you know, I did not know how much I was influencing people. Too many of my people, they told me, Prophet, do you know I fasted? Many of you have come to tell me this. Prophet, I did three days. I can't do all your hundred days. You know, you, you, you are crazy. Confirmed. Prophet, you know, but you told me one, one of my people, skinny guy too, you know, basketball player, Uchechi, he said, Prophet, I finished three days. Another one, uh, Minister Joseph, that just got ordained. He said, Prophet, I just finished this. Some of you just did five days. You didn't tell nobody. Why? Prophet has said, Prophet has God bless you. She said, during conversion, he said, Prophet, when I look at you and I'm eating breakfast, the spirit of judgment came on me. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many of you remember that? She said, I, as I'm eating the breakfast, I say, look at me now with my, look at me, I enjoy this food, eh? This egg is very sweet. And your prophet is not eating, eh? And you are here, enjoy <laughs> Do you see how the thing is shaping you? Now, we've already, it's okay. That's why it's good to be part of a group. We've already called for a seven days fasting. I, you see, I know some of you will never do it now. I know even when I measure the fasting as I'm seeing you in church, the way you move your face. Like a son is coming that is going to... <laughs> I hear you. We are cool. But it's influencing you. You see, as it's bothering you. Because you... you do you know why it bothers you? Because you're a champion on the inside. Did you receive that? That anything that bothers you is you're a champion. Everything that bothered you, say, Prophet, the message is good, but you really bothered me. It bothered you because you want to change. The day you, if you don't want to change, it will bother you. They say, Prophet, you are talking your, <laughs> because you are already crazy. <laughs> but if anything that bothers you, it means you are a champion. And people think things don't bother you. It bothers you more than they think. But you're not going to end in bother. Because bother enough won't do you anything. Because information do not help you. It is implementation that helps you. Any information that you do not implement does not help you. So what is your true power? Write it down. My true power is my action. No action, no power. No action, no power. When you take action, when I wake up in the morning, I know if I don't go wrong, I'm not taking action. Amen. It is your action that is your power, not that you know the information that you know it will be good to go and run. No. Wear your shoe, wear your socks and put it together and go take off. No matter the pain you're feeling, go and run. That action is the power. Action. If you know you have to study, study. Action is the power. It is not desire, it's vision, it's habit, it's discipline. Yesterday I was showing my sister inspiring. I've inspired my sisters. Glory be to God. In, uh, I've always inspired my brother here, but I've inspired my sister. You know, the husband is like me. 
Immediately, the husband saw me in Atlanta. He came to see me. He said, no, no, no. The, the wife said, the husband has been in the gym every day since the day he seen me. He said, hey, I cannot become the crazy one. <laughs> the husband is determined. And the wife said, this is prophetic. And yesterday, my sister was telling me, say, prophet, I respect you. I said, what? He said, I tried it today, what you do, what you share. He said, it's not easy. Oh. <laughs> it takes high level of determination. So I now told her, I said, should I share a secret with you? He said, yes. I said, let me show you where I'm at. I show her where I was. He said, prophet, you are still doing all this stuff in the rain? I, I think I told her us. I said, yes. When I show her, she said, your determination. Listen, in greatness, there must be obsession. You are not going to end up great. Listen, if you think you being good is going to get you there, good and greatness do not get you there. Let me go shock you. Excellence do not get you there. You need to be outstanding. So if you think, uh, if you are poor, you get poor result. No, if you are poor, you don't get any result. If you say, okay, if I'm good, I get good. No, if you are good, it's not good enough. Even excellent is not good. There are many excellent people. The people that are champions are not excellent. They are outstanding. Are you outstanding? Or are you excellent? Or are you just good? Or are you poor? Be greater than uh, good. Don't just be excellent. Be outstanding. How do you get there? Be willing to fail. Be willing to fail. Some of you can get into a good relationship because you're afraid to fail. You can get to where you're going. Do you know if you have never failed, it means you've never tried hard enough. I will be Let me tell you this. I will better celebrate somebody that is aiming high and miss than somebody that is aiming low and hit his target. You are aiming low and you are hitting your target. Nobody cares about that. Aim high and hit your target. If I tell you my target, you will run. And you know why I can do it? Because I don't have nobody, media department, thank you. I don't have nobody around me, no group, no people. I don't, I can't be around chickens when I'm an ego. You, you cannot even figure out my energy. It's too much. I'm too focused to be distracted. Tell us distraction. Say, can I catch him? You say, you can't do it. Can. <laughs> He's crazy. You know what I eliminate? When you eliminate anybody that can pull you down, you will take off. When you eliminate, sometimes, Kabasha, I don't know if I, I've preached enough. I can stop right here. So aim high. Aim high. Not good. Don't, don't be good. In school, don't be good. Don't be excellent. Be astounding. Be greater than a teacher. When you finish with your teacher, your teacher will want to go read. <laughs> your teacher will say, let me go and study. Outstanding spirit. Praise the Lord. Outstanding. You're, why do you just do good at your job? Why do you just say, I'm excellent at my job? No, excellent won't do, get it done. You need to be outstanding. One of a kind. One among a thousand. The guy that inspired Michael Jordan, his coach asked him, how did you become great? He said, I demand for myself more than anybody can demand for me since I was seven years old. I demand for myself. Michael Jordan said the same thing. That nobody demand more of himself more than, no coach demanded more from Michael Jordan than Michael Jordan demanded for himself. So people must call you crazy. That's when you are just starting up. Do you know why they tell you to slow down? Because they love you. 
But you need to understand. They've never seen you in the dimension you are heading. That is why there is an outcry. But you, the visionary, must know your dream. Because you know your future. And you know where you are heading. So no discouragement, no distraction. You are heading to be outstanding. Glory be to God. Oh, I'm tired. Tiredness is a choice. Tiredness is a choice. When you see tiredness, the tiredness, please visit Prophet Eric. He will tell you, I tried. It didn't work. Because even when the man is tired, he go and do crazy stuff too. Tiredness is a choice. It is the mind that is tired. Astam. Heroes are those that have willpower against tiredness. When you think you've killed them, they wrap up their legs and they're still going to make that journey. They don't give up. Well, normal people. And do you know why you love heroes? Because you see something in them you have. You know that is what I should rise up to. Those of you that talk people down, that's why you and your husband and you and your wife, you are quarreling. Your wife is not trying to get, get you to, or you should not be talking down at nobody. People leave you when you no more inspire them. Stop trying to help people to avoid struggles. Oh, I, I, I'm preaching good there. Let me say it again. Most of us, especially men, once our wife talk, we don't want to hear it, so we help them. We want to fix them so that they can stop talking. But once your wife figured out that channel, she's not going to stop. She said, you're not going to fix me. <laughs> but the point is this. Don't help people to avoid struggle because pain and reflection will lead to the greatest knowledge. What I've come to talk to you about this morning is not to do anything but to remind you. Because true learning is just a reminder. True learning is somebody reminding you of what you already know. You already know these things. But God is just using me to remind you of it. It's not that you did not know these things. It's a reminder. Learning is a reminder of what you already know. Now, action is needed. You will take it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. So, the greatest among all of this is what you say is what you are saying. You are in charge. Stand up on your feet and give him praise and glory. You are blessed. I have many things to share with you, but I will stop right there. Our God is a good God. Lift up your voice and celebrate him, celebrate him, celebrate him, celebrate him, celebrate him.